The Earth is over 4.5 billion years old. And the truth is that, although we'd like to think so, we actually don't know all that much about it. How life sprang forth from the organic compound-rich primordial ooze is best guess, and a hotly contested topic. But with the new year comes a new theory showing how life on Earth was formed. Welcome to Factnomino. Today, we're breaking new ground with biogenesis in the new 2021 theory that shows how life on Earth was formed. The Earliest Record of Life The earliest evidence of life we have comes in the form of fossilized mats of cyanobacteria called stromatolites. This evidence was found in Greenland and is around 3.7 billion years old. But the kicker is that even though the bacteria are ancient, they're already biologically complex. They have cell walls protecting their DNA, hinting that there are still life forms that existed way earlier on in the fossil record yet to be discovered. These stromatolite mats are still present today, even after so much time has elapsed. In the World Heritage listed Shark Bay area of Western Australia, cyanobacteria are still happily living just as they did billions of years ago. This gives rise to the idea that life must have appeared the moment the Earth's climate and environment could support it. Still, in Western Australia and locally mined primeval zircon rocks contain high amounts of a form of carbon associated with biological processes. In other words, the gas contained within these 4.1 billion year old minerals is evidence life was flourishing even then. We know the when, but we still don't fully understand the how. It requires further investigation. After all, you can't expect the fish to come on up out of the water and meet the ape halfway down the tree. The Original Theory This is where it gets tricky. There are multiple theories that compete with one another to explain how life came to be on Earth. The problem is that it's hard to either prove or disprove them, so no fully accepted or unified theory exists. To answer such a question once and for all would fill one of the largest gaps in scientific understanding and have implications of the possibility of finding life elsewhere on alien planet. Once life began and was able to proliferate and diversify, the currently accepted model of Darwinist evolutionary theory comes into play. From there, our understanding is pretty good. It's just the stuff that happened before that that's a little hazy. Panspermia The simplest explanation could be the right one. Panspermia explores the notion that life was seeded on this planet from some other planet. The presence of Martian meteorites on Earth is proof that interplanetary transfer of material is possible. Self-replicating molecules could have just as easily hitched on one of those or on a comet from another star system. The Electric Spark Electric sparks can generate amino acid building blocks and simple sugars from an atmosphere rich in water, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen. That's not unlike the atmosphere of primordial Earth, with the benefit of great big lightning strikes driving the reaction. Sadly, the Earth was relatively hydrogen poor at this time, which throws this theory out the window. Made from clay No, it's not quite creationism, but the first molecules of life could have been forged in clay. An abundance of organic compounds concentrated within the clay could have been organized into the DNA structure we see now by mineral crystals before gaining the eventual ability to self-replicate. Deep Sea Vents Life may have sprung from the geothermal vents present at the bottom of deep ocean trenches. The large surface area of the surrounding rock may have concentrated the hydrogen-rich materials spewed out the vent with heat, providing the catalyst for critical DNA life-forming reactions. The Chill Literally, the complete opposite. A sun that was less luminous than it is now could have allowed the formation of a sheet of ice hundreds of feet thick to form on top of the oceans. This dense layer may have protected organic compounds from ultraviolet light and cosmic ray bombardment, and combined with the cold, allowed the organic compounds to survive long enough to form DNA. Metabolism First Instead of developing from complex molecules like RNA and DNA, Life may have actually developed from the interactions of much smaller molecules. This is known as the metabolism first theory. Covalent bonds between organic compounds may have formed something similar to what we would call a cell membrane. Over time, more complex modules could have formed that made this rudimentary cell wall better and better. 
Around the same time, prebiotic autocatalytic sets could have been undergoing a Darwinism of their own. They're simply cyclical chemical reactions that had one of two outcomes. Obviously, whichever outcome prospered, the propagation of more reactions was the dominant outcome. Metabolism and energy generation may have driven the formation of life, as the combination of cell wall-like molecules and energy-producing prebiotic autocatalytic sets would have resembled something akin to a modern-day cell, only on a much basic level. RNA world This is currently the most favored theory, and names RNA or ribonucleic acid as the first identifiable molecule responsible for life on Earth. The theory is simple. We look at how a cell replicates now, and we have our answer. DNA needs proteins in order to form, and proteins need DNA in order to form. So how could they have formed without each other? RNA stores this information from the DNA, accumulates building blocks, and forms the protein. It's the middleman, and without it, we don't have DNA replication. The question still remains how RNA was formed in the first place, however. It's thought that the molecule spontaneously formed on Earth as a freak occurrence, and once formed, replicated to form the basis of life. The RNA world theory was developed in the 1980s, and one that is perhaps the most widely accepted amongst the scientific community. Genetics first versus metabolism first. This is as easy a question to answer as, what came first, the chicken or the egg? No doubt that the modern cell requires a way to replicate the genetic information required to make its required proteins, but also it needs a metabolic pathway in order to generate energy to fuel its function. Up until this year, it's been a hot topic of debate with compelling arguments presented on both sides. That is, until a new how was suggested. The new how. Building on the RNA world theory, chemists have discovered that a single compound called diamidophosphate, or DAP, could have knitted together deoxynucleosides, the tiny building blocks of DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid. This DAP was present on Earth in decent amounts before we think life arose, and could be its catalyst. It's now thought that both RNA and DNA arose together as products of similar chemical reactions. The first self-replicating molecules, which were essentially the first life forms on Earth, were likely mixes of the two proteins. This research paves the way for more extensive experiments into how self-replicating DNA-RNA hybrids could have evolved on primordial Earth and seeded the more mature DNA data storage and RNA messenger system present in more advanced organisms, including us. The idea originated from doubts in the explanation of the RNA world theory. It's believed that the RNA protein molecules were too sticky and molecularly reactive to serve as the first self-replicators. In the human body, an RNA strand attracts other RNA building blocks, which stick to it to form a mirror image strand, a 180-degree opposite replicate of the original. This replicate is then free to attract more RNA building blocks in order to create copies of the original strand. It acts as a messenger to carry the data of the original protein. The copy has acted as the template for self-replication of the original RNA strand. The issue is that the messenger RNA is simply too good at templating complementary strands and does a poor job of separating from these strands. Modern organisms contain special enzymes that force the strands to break apart and go their separate ways after replication. Without the enzymes, they would stay attached indefinitely. So, how would RNA replicate in a primordial puddle where these enzymes don't exist yet? Enter the chimeric workaround. This newly published theory explains that molecular strands that are part RNA and part DNA could successfully template complementary strands for replication in a much less sticky way, and easily separate after with no enzymes needed. The DAP compound could have just as easily stitched together RNA and DNA building blocks as hybrids, instead of selectively making separate RNA and DNA proteins. Surprisingly, DAP reacts to deoxynucleosides better when they are not all the same type, but a mixture of the A, C, G, and T letters that denote the four basic building blocks of life, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. 
Although this new theory can't be strictly proven, it does create a new frontier of more robust methods for synthesizing RNA and DNA proteins without the need for any fragile enzymes. For example, the PCR or polymerase chain reaction technique used to test for the COVID-19 virus.